I know that term from the rap world, like based, and but I didn't know what based means, but I've heard it used a bunch of times, and it's always a positive. Based is all about being yourself and not caring about what anybody else thinks. I don't care, I'm based. 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 Petty for president, racing and leveraging, facing competitors, I'm not the regular Petty for president, you are not ready, yet serve and I represent, trust me with all respect Petty for president, move and protect me, yes, no losing delicate seats in my homies mess Petty for president, black me my leather, yes, no speech impediment, TV like Letterman Petty on podium Alright, and we are live, thank you everybody for tuning in to Base Talk I am your host, Rodney Smith, also known as Lord Petty, who drank way too much eggnog last night I have a wonderful guest today, Miss Emily Wilson, a.k.a. Emily Saves America. That's me. Thank you for coming through. Your, uh, <laughs> your, your presence is very appreciated. Uh, a couple formalities. This podcast is brought to you by lordpetty.com. Go there. You can get yourself a I don't pay taxes shirt or some other cool swag so you can look as cool as me. And uh, check out my book, The Petty Principles, that is available on Amazon and other places on Barney's and Nobley's. And now that we got the formalities out of the way, um, what I kind of want to know, Emily, is your origin story. I want to know the the villain origin story. <laughs> yeah. I really am the villain. Um, so born in Newport Beach, raised in Seal Beach, and... Um, graduated high school, moved to Los Angeles, and then was just mostly started modeling, got into nightclubs and fashion and all the most like generic, typical things. So when did the red pill kick in? When did you decide that everything in front of you is bullshit? Yeah. So it's funny because I was actually like pretty, God, I like look back on myself and I'm honestly so embarrassed. I was like, no one knows because they see the way I look and act now which is obviously like aggressively red pilled. Um, I was like hardcore liberal my entire life. The old photos of me with like literally like no eyebrows, green hair. Damn. I was on the Trump is racist. Uh, he hates women. Like I was such a hater my entire life. Then COVID happened and lost my job. And I had so much time for the first time in my life. Keep my, I did not go to school. I did not go to college. Um, I consider myself most of my life a fucking idiot. Just next party, next club, next drink, all I ever cared about. And I had so, I like went through the worst breakup. I admit I voted for Trump, which made all my friends abandon me. I lost my job and I literally had 24 hours a day completely alone. And I started listening to Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens. And I was like, wow, these people are saying what seemed at the time very offensive, kind of crazy things. And then I was like, you know, I kind of I kind of like what these people have to say. Then I started tuning in and then I just aggressively red pilled myself on my own by just simply educating myself 24 hours a day for literally like two years. And then I just was like, oh, these are like my people. Was So was this around 2020 then? Was this a COVID this was layoff? Just, yeah, thing? just beginning of COVID all the way yeah. until obviously now. Because that is so funny. I was making a joke about, uh, you know, I was talking about you with somebody, just what I've known from your social media and like talking <laughs> on the phone to you. It's like her and I fell from the same basket of wherever we're made as humans because even that, it was, it was the same exact story where I got laid off and I was just sitting at home with nothing else to do. Yeah. And I watched a Trump speech just to hate on him because I didn't like the guy. That's how I was. And so I watched, I watched the speech and then later that night I was watching the news and I saw how they chopped it up. And yep. I was like, that's not what he said. I mean, I don't like the guy, but that's still not what he said. Yeah. And then I went down the rabbit hole and it's just the same exact story. And then I started to open up my eyes and just everything was bullshit. Yep. And then you start going, wait, if this is bullshit, what, what else? else is bullshit? Because yeah. if I only watch the news, I go, oh yeah, this guy is a racist, sexist asshole. And then I go, but wait, that's not what he said. And then I start getting to the point where like, I will, I am a troll across the board and that's what I enjoy and what I like. Yeah, Granted, respect. You, yeah, right? Because right. you got to have some humor and I think people can respect you a little bit more if you're not so annoyingly serious all the time because no right. one wants to be around that person. But then I, once I actually watched him speak and looked at all the things he's done, I was like, wait, I not only like this guy, fuck the politics, put that aside. I love this guy because I like him because he's a troll. He is a huge troll. And he's troll. very, 
very highly intelligent. And I, I will get burned at the stake for this, but I have a theory that he is not as conservative as he puts out there. And this is, is anyone. No, because here's the thing. So my my following, because I made fun of just this hyper liberalism, like the blue hair, you know, people yeah. screaming with their tits out. <laughs> I made fun of it so hard where I garnished this following of conservative people. So they yeah. just kind of, you know, claimed me, I guess. But uh, when I look at Trump, I so I spoke out about the Roe v. Wade thing. I said, this is stupid. You know, that's kind of a thing that Which we clicked on. Which is what I was like, I like this guy because he's the only one besides me that is coming from a very honest, normal, non-judgmental perspective, which is the only thing I respect. And I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the recognition on that, I well, guess. Well, you're telling the truth and no one tells the truth. They pick a side, then mm -hmm. they say what their side wants to hear, which I don't respect. Right. And my biggest pet peeve is that when I spoke out about it, I get a bunch of people, oh, that's shallow thinking. I'm like, is it shallow thinking? Because I'm using what I was thinking a week ago and trying to see the other perspective. So yeah. for the fact that I'm not one of these either extremes Which how's that are all i see two extremes and so after experiencing that you know it's not like it bothered me or anything but after i just saw the the outcry from all these conservative people i realized okay this is why trump pretends to be so conservative do you really think one of the biggest playboys of all time has not paid for an abortion or two in his life literally what okay i'm in a group chat multiple group chats everyone in la it's very based and i'm like LA conservatives, I, I don't call myself a conservative anymore because I just get dragged so hard. I have conservative values and I believe it's the way the world, I would rather promote that because I think it's the best. I don't even, am I a Republican? Yeah, I vote right, but I don't want to be in any of those groups because they're all clinically insane. But <laughs> right. it's so funny because I'm like, me and all my friends, I call us like city Republicans. Like you're telling me that a man who's probably slept with how many beautiful women in the world yeah. is pro-life? Really? There's no way. Because uh, he well, Oh, the he, same way Herschel Walker's pro-life, right? He wouldn't know. Yeah, I mean, all these politicians, they're all, <laughs> I'm not on. calling Trump a scumbag, but just for the most part, all these politicians are just scumbags. So they're That's what I'm saying. You have to be a bad person to be a politician. <laughs> yeah. He's the least politician we've ever seen. Yeah, and that's why everybody hates him because he came after the politicians. Have yeah. you have you seen uh, Dave Chappelle's uh, what the do you monologue call it? he just did on SNL? Yeah, where he talks about you know a star is born. Incredible. It was it was really incredible. If you guys haven't seen that, go watch it. It's really good. It's not like I need to be out here promoting Dave Chappelle. I think he's doing all right by himself. Yeah. But I would okay. Did you what did you take away from that? Because I kind of took away him being like almost supportive of him running in twenty twenty four. I just kind of took away from it that. The world sucks and we're all fucked. Yeah, um, that's true. Because that's how, I'm like, I'm just gonna enjoy my life and watch it burn. Yeah, I stopped caring. That's why it's just all trolling. Well, that's why at this I'm point. happier. Yeah, exactly. I look at everyone in politics. I go, you're miserable because you are fighting a battle that you'll never win. Because if you think you have a chance against any of these people that are the elites, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, I just want to get invited. Invite me, guys. I want to be in the Illuminati. I also. We'll quit my job and work for BlackRock tomorrow if you offer me more money. 100%. I don't even have beef with them. I'm just jealous. Like, if I sit here and trash these politicians, I, I yeah. just want to be a part of it. That's the thing. I'm like, maybe I'm just jealous because I'm not in it. Yeah. Because here's the thing. If you offer me money, I'll probably say yes. Yeah. To a lot of things. Yeah, 100%. With that said, I think every single person who's a politician is a 100% full of shit. I mean, let's be real. All I'm coming for you guys. I pride myself on I see both sides of everything. Yeah. And I call everyone out. I drag the left as just as hard as I drag the right. Every single man I see on that stand, I'm like, really? You guys don't drink. You don't smoke. You don't do drugs. And you only fuck your horrible, <laughs> annoying wives? Yeah, no, really? I, don't, I don't believe it. Because a lot of you have been in my DMs. So I know that's 100% not true. You've had politicians in your DMs? Of course. Oh, let's expose them. I'm just kidding. Oh, you know what's funny, too, is I'm like, I'm not that person because I am. Everyone can make fun of me. They live in LA and I'm spiritual and I drink matcha and I'm a stupid bitch, according to everyone. But I do believe in karma. I could retire tomorrow if I wanted to blackmail everyone. I don't. I will say though, no one has came at me harder than the right. I agree. The that left just blows me off. They're like, oh, you vote for Trump? You're a racist. Kill yourself. And I'm like, that's fine. Well, so. It's so to kind of play devil's advocate, I don't think they're smart enough to spar with you. The right or the left? The left. A lot Absolutely of time, not. Because a lot of times they don't have an argument, so they just avoid it. They just want to yell and scream. Well, yeah. 
So that's but, what they do. Because I, whenever I say anything bad about conservatives, it's just war. But then also, I don't Likewise. know if that's I don't know if that's because that's what the base is or whatever. Uh, but well, the, they ride hard for their own. Yeah, it's just kind of a. But my problem with conservatives is they just want to bitch about what the left is doing. There's instead this cult, of taking responsibility for maybe, or instead of just making something cool. Make, thank you. Like if you're gonna be a, like why shit constantly shit on the left without doing something yourself? You know, not everybody wants to sit inside and like no offense against religion or anything, but nobody wants to sit inside and read a Bible all day. That's their issues with me. Their issue with me, which is why I am like, I swear to God, I'm like the most hated person on the right. <laughs> and when I go to all your events and all that stuff, I mean, I've literally been attacked in lobbies, like almost assaulted. I mean, the shit talking online. And the funniest thing to me is like, these girls come up to me judging me and I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't want to live on a farm and have nine children at my age. I have a good life. And let's be real. Like, is there maybe a part of you that's a little bit jealous? Because I used to post a lot and now I've toned it down just because like I'm getting older and I'm like, okay, like I was trolling so aggressively hard and it gave me a voice, which is nice. But I'm like, people are so dumb. I'm like, I would just say that shit to piss you guys off. And it worked. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't identify with them because I'm like, dude, doing these things doesn't make you a bad person. And no offense, like you guys can go hard as you want. Like, yeah, the right. But I'm like, who the fuck do we? Oh, Mike Lindell. That's who represents me. That's who I have, the my pillow guy. Like literally, say, name that, one cool person on the right. There's not all they all they do is bitch. And that's if they and we just keep going. When I say I'm still saying weeks, I'm still like meant if you would ask me two weeks ago, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a Republican. But then now we're going after gay people again. We're going after the abortion thing. We're going, it's like, dude, who we cares? already we, like conservatives are a great handbrake on society. Yeah. Because without them, we'd all have purple hair and we'd all be called Zers and whatever. Well, listen, like, you need the far right to equal out the far left right and that likewise and that causes steady progress like a, a balance in the yeah. universe very slow very slow progress yeah but when it's <laughs> when we're going backwards on things where we've already collectively decided like yeah people should have the right to marry who they want like i don't give a fuck why would i my stance on everything is if it does not affect my life i do not care right my best friend is gay actually most of my best friends growing up are gay why what do i give a shit yeah i don't care just keep me out of it yeah it's it's the same thing, you know. They say they don't want the LGBTQIASM plus yeah. three thousand alphabet people, as yeah. they would say. They're like, you know, don't ram this down my throat. I don't want this in my children's school, which is a very valid point. But then also, this might be hard to wrap your head around. Not everybody believes in your in your sect of religion. You Shocking. Know? It, which is it's such a uh, both sides. Yeah. Everybody's just kind of lost their fucking mind. Well, and my thing is just like, what do you care? There's something weird to me if you're like writing for like gay people not to get married. It's like, what do you care? You're suppressing something. Like I, that's yeah, yeah. it's weird. That's yeah. like even Matt Walsh, who like is literally probably my favorite podcaster. Him on Joe Rogan, he still could, and I think he wins every argument. Yeah. On Joe Rogan, he couldn't win the gay thing because he just was like Joe Rogan's just like, what do you care? Yeah. What do you? How does it affect you? The same way with abortion. I'm sorry. So we're all supposed to have these kids we don't want ruin our, you know, ruin our lives at young ages. And then I'm sorry, who's going to take care of them? Like Ben Shapiro, are you going to take care of every baby in this country? Well, yeah. And then they want to come after any, they come after any sort of, um, what's the word, any sort of programs that help these single moms and yeah. say, oh, well, I don't want to pay higher taxes, but I want to have all these babies, right? It doesn't make sense. And this is very grim. This is kind of a dark perspective, but yeah. Well, hippie. You would think if you're trying to get in power, right? you would just kind of appease the masses and then push your radical agenda. Mm -hmm. It's like you just lost a bunch of elections a week or two ago, and now you're going even further. You're going to double down. So it's like get in power, just kind of go after the middle and then yeah. do your radical shit, you know? But instead they're like, well, we just lost, so let's be even more unappealing. That's what I mean. It's to the point where me and my friends look at the party and I go, so you're the party that lost to brain dead <laughs> people do you know what's worse than being brain dead losing to yeah. brain dead people i mean yeah. it's embarrassing the thing is the left is smart i told my dad my dad's 80 years old and last night i was like they're smart because they go after the youth yeah because the culture war is the war you need to win 100%. and we lose that across the board there is not one person on the right i see myself in at all no they're dorks they're literally losers. There's not one person on the right who is young, 
who is cool, who is attractive, who is level-minded, they're losers. Even the influencers for Turning Point are such a joke. I could stitch every video and destroy them across the board. I don't care. I don't care. No, they're losers. They're embarrassing. You have that... You have chicks in like Playboy <laughs> bunny costumes being like, I'm a conservative and anyone who isn't is stupid. It's like, you're dumb. You're the problem. I mean, the most, all they do is push generic arguing points. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Do you agree that we lost because of abortion? Are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So do I. So does every person I know with a brain who votes right. Yeah, I mean, even, and that's what I'm saying, even if you disagree with, well, okay, even if you disagree with the abortion thing, swallow the reality and then get in power and then enforce it. I don't agree yeah. with it, but it just, none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense across Is the board. Is it supposed to though? Are we not two wings on the same bird? Are we not supposed to be fighting so we don't know that they're like carpet bombing children behind our backs every two seconds mm -hmm. while they tell us, you know, like send money so, <laughs> you know, we can like fight climate change, which is the biggest joke. Yeah. I, I believe we're supposed to be fighting, and that's why I just tap out most of the time. I'm just focused on bigger things. Yeah, it's getting things riled up. Because we, we were kind of talking on the phone the other day, and um, I think we're it's so funny how we're both like in this pretty much the same mental space, but how you kind of want to start moving out of politics. and 100%. Get more. I hate everyone in politics. All you guys. All of y'all. I don't like any of you. And you've been very vocal about defending a lot of controversial people, and one of them is Andrew Tate. Love Andrew. And Top G. So I just kind of wanted to get an opinion um, because you, you don't hear that from from women a lot. That's because they're stupid. And so what what is it that people are missing? What is the misconception about the top the top G? So what they did to Top G was what they did to Trump and everyone who's exposing, uh, you know, New World Order. Uh, they took him. They took clips. They made up a bunch of stuff and then they demonized him. The most ironic part of Andrew Tate is when you listen to him. First of all, uh, I'm not stupid, so I don't have to agree with everything everyone says. Right. The same way um, I'm the first person to like, if I say something that's incorrect, please correct me. Because I'm not coming from a very educated <laughs> background of right. blacking out at nightclubs every night. So A, feel free to correct me. But the funny thing about him is he had the conversation that no women are willing to have, which is the space I'm trying to go into. I want to go into health and wellness because politics don't help people. Making people healthy helps people. Right. So I'm trying to get out of it. And if anything, I'm for someone who's anti-feminism, I'd like to help women. And I think I can do that through my own stories and whatnot because I come from like a little bit of a shit show of a background. All Andrew Tate was trying to do was call out women to take responsibility, which we don't in society because we do have an easy way out for literally everything. It's funny that men now are demonized on an insane level. And all he's trying to do is help us help ourselves, but they don't want that. That's why they cut him off. What they did to him is fucking terrifying. And if you can't see that, then I don't know, but he's right about everything. He's right about like when women are younger, you're more pure. You're like supposed to be beautiful. You're like supposed to be feminine and all these things. And what's funny is if you go into like deep feminism and all these things, me and my girlfriends talk about horoscopes and all this dumb shit. It's true. Like when women have to be masculine, it's really bad. It brings out a bad side of us. And it's like, yeah, yeah I don't know guys that like want to be with women that are completely like ran through and masculine and all these things and they're trying to destroy the nuclear family he's been right about literally everything and then they're like oh he abuses women that's why he's in this country then you listen to him speak none of it's true he's the number one man on this planet who's going hard to save women yeah i agree with you uh and i don't think he was saying i do think he had obviously he had self-interest right at the end of the day of course. anybody sitting in front of a microphone in any sort of we way all has, do. has some sort of self-interest of course but he wasn't saying anything new it's just that he was the first one to come along that was so entertaining he's saying shit i've been saying for years but i'm not a world-class kickboxing champion and i don't exactly. have the charisma like that guy does so he came along and he just kind of blew that door open to yeah where, i mean there's been guys like do you know who rich cooper is there's like there's guys i mean that that whole it's nothing new that he's saying. That's the thing. He's been saying what everyone's been saying for all of humanity. He's just that entertaining. Of course. Well, he also, the one thing I will say, he makes generalizations. And it's like, you guys, anytime you make a generalization, there's exceptions. And it's not always right. 
it's a generalization. But he's generally true about everything. Right. And being a woman, everything he says is correct. And I think a lot of those women don't want to admit that, like, it's a lot of effort to take responsibility for your actions. And ironically, he's right when it says, like, dude, our only power is being feminine and withholding sex from men, ironically, which is so true across the board. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but, you know, now feminism is showing your asshole on OnlyFans for two ninety nine a month <laughs> and getting ran through by the entire town. And if I speak yeah. anything different, I'm insane. So did you lose quite a bit of friends then around? Every single one. Every single one. Do you care? Every single one except for one. Uh, yeah. I um, <sighs> It's like, it's A, heartbreaking because I've been the same person. Right. I just finally educated myself and had the balls to stick up for myself when not one other person in LA did. Um, honestly, the only person in LA who's been outspoken, I will give them credit, is my friend Matt Belinsky. Uh, Shout out, Matt. <laughs> Shout out, Matt. Um, it breaks my heart. But at the same time, my life is so much better without them. And I would never want to continue to live my life surrounded by people that can't handle me having different opinions. It's hard to live a lie. It's 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 got to be I felt. it's got to be exhausting. Um, that's why I don't give a shit anymore. I just say whatever I think, and me if too. people don't like it, I mean, if some company's not going to hire me because I'm not going to, yeah, I don't care. I'd rather be homeless, to be honest. That's how I feel now, but that's also came with age and experience. I mean, the irony of like, if I wanted to be a fucking fashion blogger tomorrow, you think I couldn't do it? Is it worth keeping my mouth shut for the rest of my life? No. Do I want to work with people I don't like? No, I don't. I don't need to be sponsored by shitty companies or do any of these things. I'm fully independent, not backed by anyone. No one helps me. I have a normal nine to five job that I keep secret because everyone's insane. Yeah. I have a boyfriend I keep secret because everyone's also insane. And I just live my life as privately as I can. And I'm happy. But I would always be open to those people coming back into my life and I don't hold a grudge against them. I sincerely hope they change. Yeah, I mean, people got to participate in their own rescue because you can yeah. you can put whatever facts, you can put the best argument in front of somebody. Care. Like I say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, you yeah. know? And that's kind of what I've experienced because I have friends, pretty much the same thing, but I'm kind of introverted in general. That's how I am. I'm, I'm like, if when I'm, I just work, that's all I do. Like if I'm not yep. doing something, I don't really know what I'm doing. Working, makes... eating, or sleeping. Yeah, and so <laughs> it's hard for me to sit around and just kind of, I don't want to sound like, I think I know something that people don't know or whatever, but it's hard for me to just sit around and talk about football or well, I don't care. What, whatever the fuck. Cause I don't care because yeah. I know there's just other shit going on or I could be doing something. Yeah. So I don't really miss the people that fell out of my life after the whole. I feel like I had to dumb myself down to be around every single one of them. It's exhausting. That's what I mean. And I couldn't yeah. be myself. I couldn't say things like, I remember like before our friendship ended, I may, I was making jokes about Epstein and kind of just spitting some facts. Like, let's be real. Most of the girls I grew up hanging out with are complete whores. And I was like, bow, if, bow, bow. if you think for a second, <laughs> those bitches wouldn't have been on that plane and fucking taking those free rides to Paris. Like they've done much worse things than giving a fucking massage. Let's put it that way. Damn. And he just was like, and he just was like, so you just, you just defend up scenes. You just like defend pedophiles. I'm like, no idiot. I'm just saying he did horrible fucking things. He's a horrible person, but I'm just saying there's two sides to every story. And I'm just saying what I feel and he just like couldn't so okay so you just like like pedophiles i'm like here's my thing i'm going full keanu reeves at this point in my life anything you say about me 100 percent. you can be like oh so you're like any you love pedophiles yep 100 percent. just lean into it i am getting too old i don't care i cannot defend myself anything you say about me is 100 percent correct then people have no argument that's the biggest mistake you can make is always defending yourself yeah i get really frustrated when people you know people ask for a source like you say something yeah the fucking sky's blue and they're like well you got a source for that it's like no i don't have a source open up your eyes yeah you know, or just think like you're saying that meme that's like what's the source <laughs> is there, I, did i make that meme <laughs> honestly at this point too it's like you know the tweet that's like am i a neo-nazi or am i just a normal person from 15 <laughs> yeah. years ago yeah five and also i mean i have i do think i got a lot of my following i am for being a blonde white girl, I have no problem ever hitting race. I don't care. I hate, my father raised me. We hate everyone equally. That's beautiful. 
I don't that's, care. That's, and let's be real. A lot, I think a lot of people forget the difference between racism and classism, two very different things that people like to conflate. The, yeah. the left just uses it to just demonize people. Well, I mean, they're... you know, a lovely Larry Elder, he's the face of white supremacy. I don't really know what he does, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I know that's why they're trying he's... to burn down Kanye right now because he's Who, bringing these things. And I 100% things. back Kanye. First of all, I every Jewish person I know came at me. Uh, I look at Kanye and I feel a lot of relating to him and empathy. Because when I got super red-pilled, I got red-pilled to the point where I was like, oh, I can't function in society and talking and I can't talk to people. And I'm starting to become... Schiz like almost schizophrenic, yeah. which is why I've stepped back and now I have a perfect balance and I'm very normal. With that said, I don't want to be around people who I feel like are not on my level. Right. It's but like being around crazy people, but I feel nothing but empathy for these people because it is genuinely when you realize everything around you is a lie, it is the loneliest, most fucked up feeling in the world. And that is how I feel about people like Alex talks about his experience with that and Kanye. Everything. Kanye says crazy shit, but most of what he's saying is true. When exactly. you look at who runs the entire world, it literally is all Jewish people. And what's what's wrong with that? You and know, it's like, like, what's wrong with it? Like, I don't... What, first of all, there's nothing wrong with it, but what he's saying is true. And the fact that people can't just like openly admit, it's like, okay, you guys are talking about all these companies that like are the most anti-Semitic companies when you look back in their history as Dave Chappelle brought up. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all go to Disneyland. I'm like, hope you know Walt Disney, maybe a little bit of his history. But I'm like, you're so quick. And I told him anytime they're trying to demonize someone because they want you to think they're crazy. Therefore, when they do horrible things to them, you go, well, that's okay because they're a bad person. Everything he's saying was really fucking true. And also, I'm like, if I married a Kardashian, I'd be fucking mental too. Imagine being around those idiots. Yeah, I want to peek behind that curtain. If I could peek behind any curtain, I want to see what they're doing to these men. Dude, they make them insane. Like he's right. And he was like, yo, the Clintons literally, he literally came out and was like, yo, the Clintons kill people. And everyone just completely disregarded that. And they're like, well, what'd you say about Jews? And I'm like, don't you think it's a little ironic that he spoke out against a group of people and that group of people went and took everything from him? Yeah. Yeah. That's a very like my good point. Boyfriend's yeah. Jewish. All my friends are Jewish. It's not, a Jew it's just the fact that he made a comment that has a lot of truth behind it. I don't think he has any ill will towards Jewish people, but if you've been done dirty by a huge group of people over and over, you are allowed to bring attention to it. And I also don't, I think that that's okay. You're also allowed to be hurt and be fucking pissed too. Yeah. I think just in general, calling somebody crazy is just such a, it's such a pathetic write-off. Yeah, I think you are weak and stupid if you're calling someone crazy. It's like, is he really crazy? Everyone I know who they called crazy is like one of the most intelligent people I've ever heard speak. <laughs> I like you. You referred to him as Alex earlier. Like you guys are on first name basis, which I love that, by the way. I just didn't want to interrupt you. But uh, I've never met him, but I'd love to. I think you got a chance, I think. Right. Um, so what's the is he still on the hook for a billion dollars? Do you know about that? I don't know. What are they when are they not using just making him an example? And also. It's, I'm really curious because I'm like, okay, so he owes billions of dollars to these families, even though I know he said he like reached out to them. He said he was wrong. He did everything. And I'm like, isn't it weird how like when you run 13 people over at a Christmas parade, you don't owe a goddamn thing. Or when you go and stab a bunch of people or kill a bunch of people. Isn't it weird how like Dahmer, I'm like, how, how many billions of dollars did he owe to families? Yeah, that's that's a really weird. That's How many people a, did, did they kill? It's like they're more mad about the guy who's talking about it than the people doing it. Yeah, like uh, it's just weird because I was like, my number one question is how many people did Alex Jones kill? Oh, yeah, zero. Yeah. But people who do take other people's lives, do sick things. It's OK. Did he get his Twitter back? Was he one of the people who got their Twitter? No, back? Elon just did a poll and he's like, I'm not bringing him back. And I was like, OK, so you're not for free speech. I thought that was for for Big 45. I thought that was for Trump. Or did he do one for Alex? He did Jones one for well? no. He did one for Trump. Then the one for Alex, he just said no. Oh, damn. And I go, I'm so confused what you guys are. How are you this scared of speech? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a world of children. We yeah. live around like dumb children. And then we wonder why everyone's like clinically fucking insane around us. It's very, it's very weird to see. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, even like the Channel 5 thing, it's just like, you know, I, all I have to do is wear an Alice Jones shirt and like goes viral. And it's like, Oh, so you like support killing children. You're like, yeah, let's just, yeah. 100%. Right. 
Because those two just go hand in hand, right? It's not the fact that I support free speech, which if you say online, TikTok, you will be taken down. Have you gotten some TikTok strikes? Everything I've, Instagram wants me gone. TikTok, all I posted, quote unquote, was I defend free speech. That includes all speech, which includes hate speech. Because first of all, hate speech is just kind of bias. You can say hateful things and I'll be like, I think that's yeah, fine. Who, who decides what is hate speech? The overlords, and the then, lizard people. And then the lizard people, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I, TikTok is just... TikTok is... It's a psyop. It's so gnarly because I retweet it. It's literally Chinese MK Ultra. Yeah. And no one, no one cares. They're just harvesting our lifestyles, our data, and everything. Well, and it's just... It, 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 it melts your brain. If you spend enough time on TikTok... People I know, spend like 10 hours a day on it. I know you know about this, but you know, in case somebody's listening. If you, look at the, um, if you look at the algorithms in China... Right? Yeah. They really push science and math and creative They're like things. intelligent and normal. Right. But then so the American algorithms is all, okay, who can do the coolest dance or do the dumbest thing or have the bluest hair? Yeah. So. And I'd like to point out, because I get taken down over saying the most normal things. It's wild. Promoting like being a healthy female. I mean, my girlfriend does a big blog and she talks about getting women off birth control and her videos get taken down. The amount of child pornography on TikTok and Instagram mm. is so crazy to me. It's actually even my girlfriend, and she's very middle, if anything, left leaning. I mean, I literally open my phone and my feed is like girls like boobs out, nipples out, like just a thong covering their vagina. And they're like 17. I'm like, the fact that child pornography is not only promoted and okay, but God forbid I'm like Kanye's not crazy. I'm wiped off the face of the internet. Yeah, and it just makes you wonder what what is the motive, you know? Why why is our brains. why is speech so bad? But that I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me, and that's where I go very recluse. I just want to go crawl in a hole and wear my tinfoil hat. And well, just... that's how I feel. And also, everything comes at a price. And I'm like, I don't even say one percent of the things I want to say online because when you lose your following, like Instagram, you kind of how do people find you? So I'm going to go to all these other websites, but it's crazy because I'm like, what do I say that crosses the line? And then I have, like, I truly believe if you get to a certain point, like they do take you out. Yeah. So I'm like, how much lean way do I have? Because the things that I want to talk about that me and my girlfriend sit at Erewhon and talk about is wild. Well, let's make it, a, let's try to get, let's make it a goal to try to get this video removed. So what are we, what does this go on? Uh, I'm going to put it on YouTube and everywhere. YouTube, Rumble, uh, the streaming platforms. Yeah. Chop it up. Because some... I feel like YouTube's the worst. It is the worst. Yeah. I have, well, yeah, so I have 750 subscribers or something like that on this U YouTube channel. And yeah. my videos get like six views right now because I posted, you know who Hagatha is? No. Who's that? She's a, she, she's a drag queen. But kind of a right wing troll. Oh boy! Like yeah. I said, I try to. So I, I posted a I posted a video with her, and it did. It had like oh, promoting it, that, that. I thought they would love that. Well, but so it was kind of it was a trolling video, and it got okay. reported a bunch. And then after that, my my TikTok doesn't work. My TikToks get like five. Instagram, as much as they shadow ban me, I mean, I got seventeen thousand followers, and I was looking at my story views last night. My story was getting like a hundred views. Yeah, they. I am just on shadow ban. That's why I'm real chill, real calm. Yeah, and it's. I don't it's know. not worth it. Once you lose that, it's very, very difficult. I mean, my views overnight went from like a hundred to like three thousand now. So what do you just stop posting for a while? You just let it breathe? No, this is the weirdest thing in the world. I was shadow banned for literally no joke, like two years. They were about to delete my account. Then I went to Hawaii with my friend. As soon as I got to Hawaii, I posted. Boom. And I was like, that's. I don't know. Weird. I don't know what's going on with that, but that's how I got in shadow banned. I just hate these tech companies. Well, you know, I don't feel bad for these Twitter employees getting laid off. I hate all these tech companies, but they're so necessary today, especially like for what we're doing. We just kind of need them because it's so hard yeah. to build a new following on a new platform. I Here's the thing. Like all these new platforms they build, they're kind of a joke. It's they're never going to be Instagram and Twitter. They're never going to be. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And unfortunately, I agree with you. I did make quite a bit of money on Rumble stock, but oh, really? I think somebody's holding a big bag in there. I kind of have this conspiracy that it's Andrew Tate. I he's, feel like he is my dream guest. 
<laughs> me and him, it's funny because anytime I post videos, everyone's like, it's Andrea Tatiana, <laughs> which is like the funniest thing ever. But I'm like, I would love to talk to him. Yeah. Well, you get the second best for now. That's fair. First, um, first for now. But I think he's holding a huge stake in Rumble stock. And yeah. then he pulls it out. So the price drops and everybody sells. So it gets cheap. And he puts it. I think he's manipulating the market because I think he's smart enough to. If I were him, that's what I would do. I mean, at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to be calm. <laughs> then when I have my other platforms, I'm just going to go ham on there. But at the same time, like you just, I never could truly be myself or say what I want to say because of how tech is. So, And I'm just like, isn't that just, it's kind of something you just have to accept. I hate. That's why I'm like steer out of the politics, try to incorporate health, wellness, positivity. But then at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to talk about politics. I want to talk about like real shit, like deep, deep state stuff. But as yeah. soon as you talk about that, you're like, well, even if you get into, into the health realm, all of a sudden, if you say, oh, losing weight is good for you. And all of a sudden you're fat shaming. Oh yeah. We're know? all supposed to be obese because that's healthy. Yeah. I just. Also, do you see the teacher in Texas that like got fired? Because he was like, well, every, I think he was saying like everyone deep down kind of believes they're the superior race. And then everyone was like, OK, that's sounding a little gnarly. But they <laughs> fired him. But it was wasn't it kind of funny because I was like, isn't that what the left wants? Don't they want every white person to admit that they're horrible, racist, they can't help it and there's nothing they can do and just admit that we're horrible to our core? It's not what he kind of did. And then they fired him. The left is very interesting to me. The same way AOC tweets at Elon Musk, like you don't pay taxes. And it's like the guy paid more taxes than everybody. Then anyone yeah. and also i recall you not paying your taxes and selling 60 dollars socialist sweat. i swear to god okay do you know what what is the where they put everyone in the ring and they fight what's that called triller is it triller where they set people up to fight uh okay fight or debate i don't care because i would take both me aoc ilan omar throw greta in there i hate greta you want to actually box these bitches is that what you're saying physically voice i anything i don't care i would love to put me with zero college education or background against those two fucking idiots that girl is so dumb the fact that she went from serving tacos to getting whatever salary she's on now by just being so stupid even her own party voted her so useless how do these people get into power it blows my mind ilan omar i'm like it. besides marrying your brother to be in this country that's so suppressed even though you go back to yours you're gonna be stoned to death is shocking to me <laughs> shocking to me how dare you come to this country and say anything negative yeah. that is that's where i'm like if i have a platform i'm like i'm coming for all of them because they're out of their minds and i don't understand how people even on the left don't see it because people don't like uncomfortable truth that's that cognitive dissonance kicks in because then it's like you're saying when when you had your red pill moment you start feeling kind of crazy because that's how i felt i started feeling kind of nutty well when you talk to normal people and still don't they go you're crazy yeah, and it's an uncomfortable feeling when you start oh, to I don't feel give your. A fuck. I, I, now. Now. I felt very alone and sad then. Right, like you gotta admit, it was kind of an uncomfortable feeling confronting all your beliefs you've had your whole life, and also oh, my whole you life is a like, lie. Like, uh, yeah, like what, what the fuck? This doesn't make yeah, sense. Of course. And so I don't think a lot of people want to go through. Um, they don't want to go through that mental exercise. They don't want to unplug from the matrix. Exactly. Most people aren't ready. That's actually very, very real, and I'm not gonna lie. Me and my girlfriends have this conversation every day because I just go, God, I wish I was fucking stupid because I would be so blissfully happy. Yeah. But I take the fact that there's some higher power and I'm put here to use my brain. But I look at everyone around me and I go, it must be so nice because I'll always feel disconnected. I think the more people I'm around, the more lonely I feel. Same. And also when I talk to guys, they're like, you're clinically insane they look at me like i'm mental mm. and i'm like well you know that's okay thank god i'm attractive which is the only reason i'm probably not like behind white padded walls right now <laughs> and the only re and here's the thing it's at like least that. i admit which i oh i hate when pretty girls online think that they're smart or interesting you're pretty the only reason people started listening to me besides everything i've said for two and a half years has been correct is because i'm attractive but it, I hate when girls can't admit that. It is the worst. Yeah, that is worse than the when girls say, oh, not every guy is trying to bang me. But then it's yes, like. Yes, they are. Yeah. And. By nature, 
they are. And if you think it's because you're interesting or have something to offer, you're also stupid. And this is the female hypocrisy, because if you're dating a girl, she'll get upset with you if you like some chick's picture because she knows what it's insinuating. Yep. But then it's okay for her to go grab lunch dates with her male bestie or whatever. Like, oh, no, he's not trying to bang me. So if he was liking your pictures, is he trying to bang you like I'm trying to allegedly bang some girl for liking her picture? Oh, this the amount of fights and relationships that have ended on my part because of this conversation is so crazy. I will admit I am a huge hypocrite at times. With that said, if you're liking girls' photos and you have a girlfriend, 100% disrespectful. And I do think you're probably trying to fuck that girl. It, it's hard because guys need to understand the girl holds all the power. And it's like, yeah, I could have 19 dinner dates a night, but I know these guys have no chance. But I do think that's also disrespectful, which is hard. With that said, I feel so blessed. I grew up close to my father, close to my brothers. And I do, I would say I have three guy friends that I actually genuinely love. And I think they think I'm literally disgusting <laughs> because they know me on a level most girls don't know me. Yeah. I don't think they would sleep with me because I think we see each other and treat each other like family, which is very yeah. rare. And I pray to God every girl finds that because... I think that's why I have so much respect for men and I don't hate men the way I think a lot of females do, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe they would fuck me if they could. I'd hope not. It, it, there, there are situations like that. Cause I definitely, there's always have, exceptions. Yeah. And I do know like my parents have had friends of the opposite sex that are like real friends. Yeah. And I do think that it's very important to find some of the opposite sex you can be friends with. I think, too, you got to find people that you're compatible with where you have the same boundaries, where yeah. you kind of have the same understanding. Because for some people, you know, flirting is not a big deal. Um, and I mean, I've definitely had this like boundary clash with people that I've dated where I just don't. I always do. I'm introverted. I don't really hang out with dudes. So yeah. so when I when I've, I'm either working or going on dates, like that's my my life. Yeah. And so when I'm committed to a girl, I don't. You know, I kind of expect like a certain respect. You know you what I mean? Should. And then it, it it makes me seem, I guess, possessive or something. You know? Yeah. But um, that's kind of where I think it's very important to screen people and make sure you're on the same. Um, because I, like I said, I cut off. If I'm dating a girl, I'll cut off all these other bitches. Like I don't, I don't care. Like yeah. why am I committed to a person if I'm still gonna entertain all this shit? What's the point? Then just be single. Right, but then you know you get these girls where it's like, no, he's just a friend. No, no, he doesn't want it, and I, I just can't well, do it. I find it disrespectful. And they just gross. don't want to be honest. Yeah. Like really. Right. You reach that point where you wonder, okay, do they think I'm stupid, or are they stupid yeah. enough to not realize this? <sighs> this is gonna sound horrible. Say it. But. I genuinely, I have, I do, I have a lot of guy friends. I will say that. I'm sure 90% of them would beg me if they had the chance. But with that said, I also think it's weird because I genuinely do believe that I have a lot to offer in friendships with these guys. I mean, they tell me they're like, A, they come to me for advice with girls. B, they're like, you're one of the only girls that I can fucking talk to who isn't an idiot and has a sense of humor. And I'm like, I genuinely believe that I do provide something of value to these men most girls that have guy friends, I can't imagine they're really providing much value to that friendship. I mean, they come to me with a lot of things. A, I'll pick you up from the airport, but I'll also help you out with the chick you're dating, your girlfriend, give you advice. Let's talk shit because they're like, it's just nice to be in the presence of a pretty female who's not crying because I'm making horrible jokes. Right. And that is like if, if I was your manager, right, I would definitely push you in a direction of giving men sort of dating advice because you are wired the way you are yeah. because you are, because that is a very rare thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't take dating advice from women because women don't date women and they're usually wrapped up in all this feminism shit. So yeah, it's like, you exactly. Don't, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But in your case, you're actually an attractive woman dealing with men. Plus you understand reality. Yes. You know and I, mean? I am trans. Because I genuinely feel <laughs> that threw I am. me off for like a millisecond. That just fucked me up so bad. I'm not even joking. Like, I talk what? about this all the time. I'm like, maybe I'm trans because I genuinely feel <laughs> like I am a man trapped in this like little cute feminine body because my mentality and everything is so masculine. That's why I feel like it's very like hard to become friends with girls because I'm like so brutal and so honest and so blunt. But I'm like, I think more like a guy than I think like a female. And I think that's why the guys 
trust me with advice because I'm like very real. Yeah, I don't. I don't. For th- women, it's hard because they're like, "Oh my god, he like treats me like shit." But I'm like, "You're just stupid. Just leave." There's literally how there's so many men. It's crazy. Just go. I don't know if I'd even necessarily slap like that. You're guyish or something like that. It's just you're not masculine you're, because I'm very feminine. It's a more of a masculine mentality, maybe. I think it's just you're you're willing to deal in reality because I mean this sounds very bad, but I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> women aren't forced to live in reality a lot of no. times. No. We live in two, on two completely different planets. A guy, your yeah. whole life, they tell you, oh, don't cry, man. And I'm happy for these things. Like the best, the biggest blessing I have is being this 6'2 white guy, straight white guy, is that nobody gives a fuck about my problems. So at, at the end of the day, it's on me. Nobody's going to come save me. Yep. It doesn't matter. Women have the burden and the luxury of being able to just cry their way out of situations and they don't have to face the reality oh, of the cold world. We don't live in the world you live in. I'm sorry. I will hear like, guys talk about crazy nights sometimes like it was the craziest night of my life and I'm like dude if I filmed one of the nights of my life with me and my girlfriends you guys would have your fucking minds blown because of the privileges yeah that we are rewarded yeah of course there's a lot of downfalls to being a woman but fuck I would take it every single time if I could but we do live in other worlds like it's funny like I listen. I was listening to someone talk and they were like, you know, you can go fuck everyone you want. Use birth control. You can go get pregnant, get an abortion. If you're pretty, there are so many men willing to take care of you. Everyone will cater to you. You go online and cry. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're smart. I mean, the amount of girls who are told how amazing they are 24 seven, who are dog shit people with nothing to offer, but looks is so insane. And I'm sorry, there will always be a man right there to be like, you're amazing men kind of sad. But are the women actually attracted to the guy that's like, oh my God, you're amazing when they know they're being annoying? I don't know. You know what I noticed that's really funny is I always feel like really pretty girls are always with ugly dudes. I've dated some really hot women. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know if it's just getting older. I, A, do not care about looks. I have to be sexually attracted to someone, but I don't think that's the same as being like attracted to like their face or their body. It's just, it's a vibe, mm. but it is really funny. Cause I'm just like, I mean, every time I see all, I mean, you see every model in LA and they have like the ugliest boyfriends it's cause they're fucking loaded. They're rich as hell. Yeah, That's but do why they, they're with them. But do they love them? So probably sh- not shameless plug in my book. I have a chapter about <laughs> male sluts. <laughs> So, so the Lutz. whole that's a good name I should have, but the whole concept of it is how women will use men for fate well men will use women for sex right yeah and so if a woman just gives it up with nothing just no strings attached whether it's an insecurity issue of just yeah. giving the goods away too easy I don't like the word it's an ugly word but it just is what it is yeah. we label it's a slut right yeah and I so don't care, it's a word in the male realm what it equates to is when people just use you for favors and money and whatnot because guys Which will never. Which we do. If a chick's just getting ran through, no guy's ever gonna respect her. Because yep. he's always in the back of his mind, like, oh, this chick's kind of a slut, you know? Yep. I believe this is my belief. I might be wrong. You can correct me here. If a woman is just using a guy as a doormat, it's the same. It's the slut theory, and she'll never actually love that guy. Yeah. So it's more of a. It's not gonna be the guy she ends up with. It's gonna be the. I mean, like, I look at all these chicks with these dudes, and it's like the thing is, all the beautiful models, like they just go through dude after dude after dude. They're all very wealthy, and then I think like. Eventually, they find one that's a bit of a mix of both. But do you, I'm so interested by this because I posted like a poll on my Instagram and I'm like, is being a beautiful woman kind of the same as just being a really wealthy guy? I think the closest you can come to being a beautiful woman is being a really wealthy guy. OK, so it's the closest. That's what I think. Yeah, you'll never get the full no. um, maybe. I think if you're a very famous, if you're an A-list famous guy, that's the closest thing. Closest. To, yeah. Like if you're Le- Leonardo DiCaprio, I can barely say his name, yeah. Leo or somebody like that, because you just get instant access. Yeah. You know, you don't even have to spend your money, but you still have that. I just wish more women would be honest about the fact that like, yeah, like men just tolerate so much from us and we just live a different world. Like it's funny, like the amount of times I'll like go and like get a coffee and it's free. Yeah. No one's giving you a fucking free coffee for no reason. Like, it's just not like, oh, it, oh, oh, here, I'll help you with the groceries. Oh, come here. Oh, no problem. Have a good day. Oh, you know what? It's free. It's like the fact that women think that that's because like it's anything but besides their looks. And I'm sorry. Oh, God. I have to call her out because she's, I maybe she's cool. I mean, Emrata did a podcast. And who? Ne- 
Emily Ratajkowski. Oh, okay. What do you call it? Em Rata? That's like what her name, whatever yeah. everyone calls her. She is stunning. She is beautiful. I listen to her and I go, oh God, please, for the love of humanity, just admit the reason you have everything you have is as a fem, because she's a hardcore feminist, I guess, yeah. is everything you have in this world is because men want to fuck you. You are, they are the reason you have everything you have. And the fact that you go online and think feminism is telling girls like, fuck the guy on the first day, uh, be empowered, being a slut empowers you and all these things. Like, first of all, she seems really educated and smart online. You listen to her talk. She's not. She's yeah, I've very, never heard her talk. very low brow. Yeah. She's just like, oh my God, we're just like girl bosses. And it's like, dude, your entire existence and all your money is because of men. Just is give, she, just give men the credit. What does she even do? Is she a model? Is yeah. Her thing? I mean, it's kind of proven. Oh, she wrote a book and I'm like, yeah, so can I, sweetheart. <laughs> it ain't that hard. I can hire someone to write a book tomorrow if I really wanted to. No, writing books is very hard and only very smart people do it. Okay. That's true. Sorry. But just, to, <laughs> just to prove your point is I have no idea what she does and I know who she is. There's no man. There's no man where I just know who he is and I have, I have no idea. If she came out and was like, yo, no one on this planet would give a fuck about my existence if I was ugly, I would respect her so much. But she just talks about how hard as a woman, the struggle as a woman. I'm like, bitch, go take your God knows what car back to your nice apartment on your Instagram with all your fancy things and your designer bags and the parties you're invited to. Like, I just don't understand why it's so hard for women to admit when they're attractive that everything they have is because they're attractive. Why is it that hard? I have no problem admitting if I was ugly, I would not be sitting here and I would have nothing. I wouldn't have the job I have. I wouldn't have the boyfriend I would have. I wouldn't have anything. Why is that hard to admit? I don't know. But see, I don't get mad. A lot of guys, you get, you know, because when we say red pill, there's kind of this toxic like manosphere type deal within the red pill community. And a lot of these guys are very bitter with women. They're very bitter at this concept that women do get to exploit these certain things. I don't get mad about it because I'm going to be 33. And so I've gotten to watch these chicks where they just do get dicked up in their 20s. They got nothing. And the rest else. of their life sucks and yours is really good. Right. Like my <laughs> life keeps getting better. Yeah. And ours just gets worse. And then so, and so it's just, it's this toss up. You know, you get all these female privileges and whatnot. But also at the end of the day, I don't need to really worry about walking down a dark alleyway or something like that. You know, so there's definitely pros yeah. and cons to where I think we just all need to be more respective of reality itself and respectful yes. towards each but other. But like you, you said, know? that's going to be harder for women because we don't live in reality. True. I do, which is why I am have fucking anxiety 24-7. But I understand my privileges. And also, like, can we get to the conversation of, like, men and women genuinely need each other and we make each other better. 100%. Men make women better and women make men better. A strong woman by a man's side makes him a million times better. And instead of hating each other, it'd be nice to have podcasts where we talk about how great, like I think I am like the product of my father. I love my brothers. I respect them. And I'm so blessed to have every man I have in my life. I would not be who I was today without them. I'm not going to lie. Like I think if I was like raised by a single mom, I'd probably be like ran through doing heroin in an alley right now. Yeah. Well, so I think we need to get to the, you know, I think bad men need to heal their like mother womb. And I think women, you know, who had shitty fathers need to heal that. But I'm so tired of seeing online just like all men are trash. It's like, really? I know so many amazing ones. Yeah, God, I had a thought about that and it fleeted my pasty brain. Um, I should have been drinking last night, but... <laughs> Before we uh, before we wrap up here, I have a very um, <laughs> I got a question for you, and it is that time of the show. This is a new segment, and uh, we're gonna pull out these guys right here. <laughs> and so I want to know if you Mine which really fat. good enough good enough. You look you look pretty. Oh wow, look at us. We look it's awesome. A vibe. So. What is the conspiracy theory right now that people are confused about? Oh, my God. It's crazy because this one is like, this one's like, where do I start? <laughs> I mean, oh, God. I mean, okay, have we all accepted the fact that this, this China virus is like from China and maybe it was like released out of a lab and on purpose. Is that okay? There was literally and goodbye YouTube. We're getting pulled right yeah, now. Yeah, I was going to say, as soon as you mentioned these things, you are off YouTube. Yeah, because uh, there was a 
COVID, I uh, don't even want to say the word. I know. Don't say, say the vid. There was a bleep, bleep, bleep yeah. lab institute of the place where it started. And they literally traced it back. That was a real thing. Yeah. I, that's what I mean. I'm like, I don't think these things are weird anymore because we have all the data. Right? I, I mean, I've seen it. I don't know. To be fair, I'm, I'm kind of a hack because I've completely checked out of everything because I can't stomach it anymore. If I don't see it with my eyes, that's what I was talking earlier when somebody's like, oh, do you have a source for that? No, I don't. If I don't see it with just my- common sense, just the fact that I've been lied to about every single other thing. So this one I'm going to say, maybe they're not telling me the truth on. Yeah. And maybe, um, as I see articles every single day, just, you know, people under 50 just dropping dead. Can we maybe say the, the blank, um, doesn't work. No, it's hot showers. It's hot showers and naps. Yeah. Oh, video games are why everyone's dropping dead. I just don't like, I mean, if somebody- And we have bioweapon labs in Ukraine, and that's the only reason we're over there in care. Oh, go in on that. Go in on that. <laughs> that I could go on for days. Though. I mean, the, the whole Ukraine thing is the craziest thing in the world to me. I'm also like, how do you say you're like, not <laughs> pro-Putin, but I understand how we need strong leaders, considering we don't have that in this country. We have someone who's quite literally- Brain dead. Yeah. Um, Butthole Biden. Shout out. I'm confused, but I'm like, all left media is just like, you know, Russia's just getting their ass kicked. Do you think that that's smart? Do you think that, that it, it, it's a good idea? Because I'm pretty sure Russia would level Ukraine in literally two. Do you think it's good to go after one of the biggest leaders and say he's losing? That that might not be a good idea? <laughs> well, and did you hear they think he has They're not cancer? losing. Doesn't matter. Our our president's literally brain dead. He could have like one working organ. And I would be like, yeah, that's fine. He's still doing better. But I'm like, what is this thing of like, they're winning. They're not winning. And I'm like, first of all, don't they speak Russian? Just give it to them. I'm not going to get leveled in the United States and my life destroyed over some shithole I've never heard about. <laughs> Aren't they Russian anyways? Give it to them. They're like, oh, well, we need to defend them. Nope. I'm good. Yeah, so NATO's well, a fucking joke. Well, so in eastern Ukraine, uh, the Russians were actually greeted with open arms. I mean, the people, they basically voted they wanted to be a part of Russia again. Um, and I don't know how accurate all that is, to be honest. Well, I, don't, I don't believe anything because we don't have actual reporters anymore because they all die. I mean, I'm European and I left for a reason. That's but, what I'm uh, saying. But everyone here that's like, yeah, we're going to like. If you think that you're going to go against Russia and win, you are absolutely insane. If you think that, like, Putin's going to disappear and then there's just going to be some, like, it, they're going to elect, like, some, like, super liberal, like, mixed race woman, you're, like, actually out of your mind. Yeah, the Russians, the Russians aren't playing around. Honestly, the Russians are scary. If we get some beef with the Russians, we're fucked. That is the, I truly believe, one of the toughest groups of people on the planet that have my utmost respect, especially these idiots here that, like, fucking shit their pants after they have whole milk in their lattes that want to, that are promoting world war three. And you're like, yeah, you'll last two seconds. Hey, I've had a stomach ache this whole time. Cause I drank too much eggnog last night. So I'm highly offended on my own podcast. I'm getting offended, <laughs> but, uh, you're not offended. No, What's just, the point? I'm just Kim. But Emily, thank you so much for coming through. Uh, absolute pleasure to meet you in person. I know it's um, cool to meet people online in person. It's kind of the whole point in doing these things. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. And, um, is there anything that you would like to plug? Anything you'd like to get in before we uh, no. get back to real life of having to head back out into clown world? If you like me, follow me on Instagram. That's all I got for now. Follow my Twitter. I can finally say horrible, offensive things on there. Thank God. Cool. So that's yeah. pretty cool. But no, I'm pretty easy. I just do my thing. Well, everybody, go follow Emily. Follow moi as well. <laughs> um, go check out my book, The Petty Principles. And um, thank you for watching Base Talk. And until next time. Free Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring Alex Jones back on Twitter. <laughs>